Big Bang is the, in essence, creation of time, space, mass, etc. So those things didn't exist before the Big Bang. There was no space, no time, just nothing. So some people even say, uh, when you ask the question, what's before the Big Bang, some people will say, even very popular science will say nothing. I think, I personally think that's, if you want to be more atheistic, that's the best answer to give. Or I don't know. Those are probably the two, what I would say if I was an atheist. So, because once you, even like string theory, I don't know if you're familiar with it all, but it's this idea of what's really tiny, or the idea of like what happened before the Big Bang, those, especially what happened before the Big Bang, any answer you ever hear from somebody is metaphysical, meaning it's not using physical laws to answer it. And the reason is, you can't study it, because that situation does not exist anymore. So if somebody ever tells you, oh, this is what science says happened before the Big Bang, which there are ideas, all those answers are metaphysical answers. Now, think of the theology side. If you want to give the answer, well, at some point, at the Big Bang or before that, God initiated the start of the universe somehow using physical laws. Uh, that is also a metaphysical answer. So there's an interesting similarity between naturalist atheists and theologians. They both give metaphysical answers of what is before the Big Bang. So there's really a lot of similarities. There's no science answer for it because it's, at least at this point, not possible. Yeah? Yeah, yeah similarly. Um... Okay, so norm normally you'll have like um, that sort of quantum fuzziness where like the left one or like very small particles will appear, a pair, um, for example, electrons, um, the electron and the positron will appear mm -hmm. and then annihilate each other. Mm -hmm. So like, I think I've heard like the Big Bang sort of described like that, except yes. it's a lot of matter. Yes. So then why did it, did it not all annihilate itself? Like, it's, our universe is mainly matter. You know, you're asking a question that nobody understands what the heck you're talking about. But I will explain it, and then I'll answer it, okay? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. What people say, and you learn this in, like, the, some point in your chemistry or physics career, is that, uh, I'll just write energy. Uh, I think, I think, if I remember right, two gamma sort of energy, can convert, uh, so out of energy can come mass. That's what Einstein's equals mc squared, those are interconvertible entities, which still happens today. You can make an electron, I'll just use this symbol, and it's antiparticle in a sense, uh, an electron with a positive charge, uh, called a positron. And what people say, and this is a physical uh, experience we study in science, and this is called a quantum fluctuation. Out of energy, you can make these kind of anti-particles. They make this analogy to the Big Bang. That out of kind of nothing, you can have this quantum jitteriness for which you can convert maybe a universe and its anti-universe of sorts. Or whatever the analogy goes, different people kind of explain it in slightly different ways. But well, one thing, I have a, it is an interesting way to explain the Big Bang, yet it has a problem. We still have either mass on this side or energy on this side. So there's still an initiation of a something, at least in quantum. There is no nothing, so this isn't nothing. This is something, energy. So there's still initiating something. If you want to use that to explain the Big Bang, you have to be okay with that. And you have to be okay with this things became so stable that they didn't interact again to go back to what they started with. And that's essentially how you explain the progress of evolution in general. There was this something jitteriness that happened, and that mutation whatever, didn't go back because there was some benefit for these existing separately. And they're able to exist so separately that they didn't interact again and go reverse. So, and that, uh, those things in evolution, whatever it is, mutation, etc., 
are just low probability events that <coughs> usually scientists explain through randomness, but sometimes there's other explanations. So I think that's how it would happen, but those are the reasons I disagree with it. Is that helpful? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah, one uh, guy, Brian Green, who did the Elegant Universe, this is how he has explained Big Bang at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if he still thinks of it that way. 